Just when you thought McLaren had found their golden ticket to DRS paradise, the FIA drops a bombshell. McLaren's infamous mini DRS is dead in the water. This decision isn't just any mid-season tweak. It's a move that could completely derail their 2024 championship bid. Christian Horner's throwing shade, Max Verstappen is sharpening his words, and McLaren is sweating bullets ahead of Singapore. But why now? What's really going on behind the scenes? And most importantly, does this spell the end of McLaren's dream run? Or are they cooking up an even sneakier trick? Stick around. Because this is about to get very spicy. It all began at the Azerbaijan GP, when McLaren's rear wing was caught on camera doing something a little... unholy. To the untrained eye, it was just a simple aerodynamic flex, but to anyone with a shred of technical knowledge, it was like spotting a magic trick at a kid's party. You know it's dodgy, but you can't quite figure out how. Enter the Mini DRS, McLaren's new toy that seemed to reduce drag at high speeds without the need for a traditional DRS system. And just like that, the debate started flying around faster than Max Verstappen on a hot lap. Was this legal? Or was McLaren pulling off the automotive version of slipping your mate's car into neutral at a stoplight? McLaren's position was clear. Hey, it's all good. We passed the tests, mate. And sure enough, it passed every FIA deflection test with flying colors. But rivals weren't buying it. Christian Horner was the first to grumble publicly, probably because Red Bull's reign was suddenly looking shakier than Lance Stroll's qualifying laps. Horner, never one to shy away from drama, muttered, If this is legal, then what's stopping us from doing the same? Let's be clear, if McLaren can get away with it, so can we. But where's the line? Max Verstappen? Oh, he had a field day. Are we racing or playing with rubber bands? Let's get some clarity here. FIA. And clarity is exactly what McLaren didn't want. With every race, McLaren's rivals were seeing more red flags than a Ferrari pit stop strategy. McLaren was unbeatable on long straights, pulling podiums like they were going out of fashion. The buzz around their innovative rear wing grew louder, louder even than Mercedes power unit complaints. And that's saying something. Fred Vasseur of Ferrari took the moral high ground, declaring, There's no Fifty Shades of Grey here. Either your wing flexes or it doesn't. He wasn't exactly subtle about his disdain, was he? And as McLaren kept stacking wins, fans, pundits, and even the lunch ladies in the paddock began pressuring the FIA to take action. Finally, the FIA caved, and with all the timing of a drunk uncle at a wedding, they decided to drop the hammer right before Singapore. In a terse statement that read like something your boss sends before a long weekend, the FIA ordered McLaren to modify their rear wing. No violations, but also no dice, they essentially said. In other words, McLaren had technically followed the rules but went against the spirit of them. And if there's one thing the FIA loves more than issuing penalties, it's invoking the vague, mystical concept of spirit. McLaren responded like every busted genius in history. Fine. We'll make a few minor changes, but we did nothing wrong. All eyes were on the Singapore paddock as McLaren rolled out with their adjusted rear wing. Would this be a repeat of Ferrari's 2023 aerodynamic disaster? Or could McLaren stay competitive? To everyone's surprise, Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri kept the Papaya cars in the top five during practice sessions. Maybe the Mini DRS wasn't their golden goose after all. Andrea Stella, always the cool cucumber, confidently declared, Our success is built on more than one trick. We've got plenty of innovations up our sleeves. 
Well, Andrea, we're dying to see those tricks. Hopefully they don't involve any more questionable rear wings. Across the paddock, the reactions were... mixed. Adrian Newey, the man who probably dreams in wind tunnels, was cautiously optimistic about the FIA's stance. If we keep tightening the rules, we'll end up racing go-karts, he quipped. Toto Wolf, however, was more measured, probably sipping his coffee and thinking, As long as it doesn't affect Mercedes, I'm good. But, he did add, Innovation is important, but the FIA needs to draw a clear line. Otherwise, this sport becomes a technical free-for-all. The decision to curb McLaren's mini DRS raises some serious questions about how F1 is going to handle technical innovations going forward. Are we about to see a wave of new aerodynamic rules in 2025? Will the FIA start testing cars like they test political candidates under constant surveillance? One thing's for sure. This season just got a whole lot juicier, and the war over technical innovation is only beginning. Engineers are already talking about the next wave of innovations, internal airflow management, composite materials, and who knows, maybe a way to get around these pesky spirit of the rules statements. As McLaren gets ready for the upcoming races, the question on everyone's mind is, how will this rear wing saga end? Is this just the tip of the iceberg, or is the FIA about to shut down every attempt at innovation that comes their way? One thing we do know, the 2024 season is far from over, and we're about to witness a wild ride to the finish line. If you thought this sport was just about racing, think again. It's a chess game, so if you want to stay ahead of the curve and catch every twist and turn in the F1 drama, Hit that subscribe button and join us as we dive into the madness of Formula One. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your fellow F1 fanatics, and we'll see you next time, unless the FIA finds something else to ban by tomorrow.